So we're going to start with one of these joints to build the tail. Or you could use an intruder shank. You could also use another hook if you want this to be a double hook fly. Whatever you use, place it in your vise securely. For thread, I'm using this Vivas 6 ot but you're welcome to use a heavier thread. Personally though, I just like making extra wraps to secure the tail with this 6 ot as a finer thread helps with securing the hackle. Start your thread on your shank and cover up any lumps or sharp edges. Then we need some feathers from a soft hackle with chikubu pelt. You could also use mini marabou and soft hackle on a bag. If you're using the pelt, flip it over to access the chickaboo. Pluck two chickaboo feathers, and then turn over the pelt to access the soft tackle. As you can see here, there are varied sizes of feathers. You will want one small, and depending on the length of the hook shank you're using, anywhere from three to four are the larger feathers. Now we need to prepare the feathers. Take the marabou feathers and strip off all the lower and short fibers leaving something like this. And do the same thing with your hackle feathers. But with the hackle, make sure you get all the fuzzy marabou feathers at the base. Now we're ready to tie in the feathers. Take a marabou feather and stroke the fibers upward. You want to tie this down on top of the shank, about as long as the front hook you will be using. And I know this to be one and a half times the length of my tail shank. But you can check it after you tie it in to make sure. And that's about right there. When you're happy with the length, then clip off the waist, and clean up that section with some wraps. But end your thread with a little gap in front of the start of the feathers. Now take the other marabou feathers and pinch the tip, then stroke the other fibers downward and out of the way. Clip the tip of the feather off to leave a small triangle for tie-in. Then tie this feather on your shank, leaving a small space in front of the tail. Grab the stem of the feather with some hackle pliers and proceed to make open wraps up the shank, pulling all the fibers rearward with every wrap. Sometimes it helps to wet your fingers to get those fibers facing rearward. Once you wrap all the feathers on your shank, then capture the bare stem and trim off the waist. I like to then make some extra wraps over the stem to make sure it's secure. Now prepare the smaller of the hackle feathers by pinching the tip and stroking the remaining fibers rearward. Clip the tip off shorter and then tie in the tip with a little gap in front of the last feather. Grab the stem of the feather with hackle pliers and proceed to make very tight wraps, pulling the fibers rearward with every wrap. Make sure you end right behind the eye of the hook. Then capture the stem with a few tight wraps. Pull the feathers and stem rearward and make a few tight wraps over them. And then whip finish your fly. Then you can simply break the stem off at the base. You basically made a guard side soft hackle fly, which we'll use for the tail. I like to cement the head with this UV curing resin, just to make sure it's more durable. Now for the front of the fly. I'm using this Firehole Sticks number 811 in size 6, but any long shank and preferably wide gap hook will do, like these Gamagatsu B10S's. Place whatever hook you're using in your vise and start your thread somewhere on the shank. And bring your thread back to the start of the bend of the hook. Now we need a section of wire, about four times the length of the hook will do. Since it's wire, you probably want to use some wire cutters instead of your good scissors. Attach the wire on top of the hook, a few eye lengths shy of the eye of the hook, with about a hook shank length extending past the eye of the hook. Then move it all slightly to the side of the hook, about 90 degrees, like so. Pull the forward wire rearward and tie that on top of the hook, slightly on the other side. Make many tight wraps to really hold that wire in place. If there's any wire extending past the bend of the hook, then clip it off with your wire cutters, and then clean up that section with some wraps. The shank I used has an eye that is facing up and down, not sideways like a regular hook. 
so you'll need to tie it in accordingly if yours is the same. Put the wire through the eye, and then tie it down with a small mount sticking out the back. Place three to four wraps to hold the wire in place, and then you can pull the wire to adjust the size of the loop in the back. Check the loop to make sure the tail can move freely, and it's not too loose either. Again, try to get this wire on the side of the hook slightly, and then tie down very tight. Pull the forward facing wire rearward, and then wrap down tightly. Clip off the wire so it's shy of the bend of the hook, and then completely cover the wire with tight wraps of thread. Now I like to pull the tail up, and make a few wraps under the wire to help hold it out straight. Once your wire is secure, then paint a little head cement on the thread wraps right at the wire loop to help toughen up the thread. You can also paint up the hook shank as well to really make sure the wire is in securely. As you can see, the tail still moves. Now we need to let the glue dry before proceeding to the next step. And I find that if I clip the tail to my vise with a hair clip, it will help keep it out of the way as well. Now prepare one of the larger hackle feathers in the same way as the tail feathers. Tie the first one down at the base of the tail, and then hackle the feather up the hook with rather tight wraps, pulling all the feathers rearward with each wrap, and ending roughly at about the hook point. Capture the bare stem with a few wraps and pull everything rearward, and then tie back down the stem and feathers a bit. Then you can just break the stem off clean. Now I like to brush the hackle forward, and then rearward. Now do the same thing with your next feather. However, this time, we want to make more open spiral wraps up the hook shank with it, and end about three eye lengths short of the eye of the hook. Okay, do the same thing with the final feather. But try to stack a few wraps up close to the eye, so you'll have to plan ahead with your wraps. Now, for some reason, this feather stem split a bit. So here I am trying to tie that little bit down so it doesn't strip completely off. Once the feather is secure, then pull everything rearward and tie down. On the final feather, I like to clip the stem, make sure it doesn't mess up my neat looking head, and then whip finish your fly. Brush out the fly once again, forward and then rearward, and also try to shape the fly correctly before cementing the head. I again like using this UV resin to cement the head because of the nice glossy look it gives. Well there we have it, the articulated soft hackle, or you could call Brahma Bugger. The nice thing about this articulated version, and even the original Brahma Bugger, is the movement it has under the water. I mean, the fly really pulsates, and each strand of feather moves with each strip pause, and current of the water. This articulated version is not only larger, it also has a bit more movement in the tail, and gives a more lifelike look. Even strips also give movement, as well as the pause and strip retrieve. So here is the fly not moving, just being pushed a little bit by current. My fish tank filter is very low powered, yet the fly still pulsates nicely. It really just creates its own movement without you having to do anything at all. And here's a few fish I caught with this fly on my last trip. Some really nice rainbows. They hammered it hard.
Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share with all your fish-loving friends. Also, do me a favor and hit that like button. I also wanted to remind you that all the materials used today are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the Show More button to expand the section to view. I also have included links to where you can purchase them online. Also included a discount code for the fly artist as well, as a special thank you for being my subscriber. So please use that as you won't be able to find deals this good anywhere else. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.